Hey guys, so I have a bed in progress over here and what I'd like to show you is that we're doing a little uh, designing with stone in this garden bed. And this garden bed is actually going to be a very special garden bed, which I'll talk about maybe in a, a later episode. But we have all this wonderful stone on the property. And if you've watched the episode with Alex and the little geology tour that we did, already there's a couple things going on here. These, these flat slabby rocks, this is our bedrock. Okay. So these are the Devonian, the, the 380 million year old rocks. And these are gonna be the ones where you're gonna see most of the fossils. But the other thing that's cool, you see how this one is a completely different shape. Yes. Um, and it's also probably a different color if we could get the moss off of it. Yeah. So that one is a glacial erratic. Mm -hmm. It's a rounded boulder that was carried here by the ice sheets that have been advancing and receding across this part of the world. Um, for a couple million years. I was really inspired by that because this whole area was cut out by glaciers. And she talked about two different kinds of rocks that we have here. We have our native bedrock, which is more of this like slabby type stuff that has all these really cool fossils in. So you could see that this is an example and you could see some of these fossils in here, which is really neat. So you have that kind of rock. And then you have these rocks that were brought in more like roundish stones, they have a different look, that were brought in from the glaciers down from either the Adirondacks or Canada, which might look more like this. This is one of the larger ones that Sonder and I actually hoofed over here. nice about designing with stones in your gardens like I, I wouldn't say that this is like technically a rock garden but it has rocks in the garden and what's really nice about designing with stones is that it actually gives you something to plant around so this was a much smaller bed we really kind of chiseled it out to use that metaphor of all the weeds that had been growing in so we had a lot of die off in this section with the conifers Speaking of invasive barberry, look at it. it's just cropped up here. See that? Oh, yeah. This one I actually cut. You could see this is a fresh cut here. Just walk around these guys. I think these are alliums coming up. Oh, yeah. I think yeah. honestly, these are I think are the alley the big globe alliums, the ones that get the big purple flowers. Oh, yeah. I think I planted this up here, but when I walked out in the fall. Um, something had dug them up and they were like all scattered all over the place. So <laughs> I think that was what happened. Um, but you can see I did fresh cuts here on this Acer palmatum. This had a weird branch coming out and I like it. it it's like bonsaiing it in the landscape. It's kind of cool. And you could start to see their structure. This one's beautiful tree. I'll probably end up cutting off a bit more branches, a lot of die off. I mean, it was probably the combination of not mulching it, winter, you know, deer brows. But now we can actually see through the landscape, which is kind of cool. It's not perfect, right? These alliums kind of popped up wherever. They're probably not gonna be in their final resting place. Oh no, I just walked over one. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that was like that. No, <laughs> no just don't look here. <laughs> okay. They're kind of past their prime. We're gonna have to cut them down and we'll use the bulbs. 
plant them elsewhere. Yeah, so we extend the bed and I kind of wanted to use some of the stones that we found on the property. And um, like I said, like this one with all the fossils. So I went and sourced a couple different stones and really you're kind of limited by whether you have stones because you might have to bring them in if you want to design with them. And two, they're heavy. They get heavy really quickly. And that one that we placed in there, how do we bring that in, Sandra? Like through like the UTV and we're pulling it? Yeah, we rolled it on a pallet first. Yeah. And then we dragged that pallet over here with a piece of cardboard, trying not to damage the lawn. Exactly. And we rolled it off there into place. It was a lot of work. It was a good CrossFit workout. Yeah, exactly. That or Iron Man. Um, so here I have like some more rocks that I selected. And you can see here, this is cool. Like it has, this is again from our native bedrock. It has fossils in. So I thought, oh, that would be kind of cool. So the ones that I was trying to source have this kind of reddish brown kind of craggy hue. So it looks like they've been just sitting in the landscape for a while. And then I have these over here, which are, you know, pretty interesting. They have this almost like rosy color. Some of them are white and quartzite looking and they're more rounded. So I wanted to bring both of these in. And when thinking about like putting rocks on, you can see that this is like, this is already like a berm. It's, it's been elevated. And he had these amended soil where he planted, you know, some interesting trees, the, the previous owner. And so we wanted to extend that. And what's nice is when you're putting rock on something like this, you want it to look as if it's been in the landscape forever and that it's natural. Like it'd be kind of weird if you just had flat land and you just like, plopped a big stone in the middle of it. You know, maybe that's like a statement or like a statue or something like this, but we wanted to have this feel a little bit more natural. So it's kind of moving in the direction of the actual planting bed. And what I wanted to recreate was as if like the glacier had come through and scraped the bedrock away and then tumbled in some of these, you know, uh, rounded stones. So you can see that the direction is kind of heading this way. And I selected a few more stones that we're going to place around. And you could see when I started to place the stones, it gave me a place that I could plant plants around and again, create these microclimates. So on the top of this berm here, even though we just had went through a pretty epic rainstorm, so everything's a, a little wet, um, this is a fairly dry area. So the things that probably want more water, we would plant towards the base of the berm. And the stuff that doesn't mind being a little drier, we'll plant on top. And we saved a lot of the sedum from down in the meadow area that we're going to be planting. And you can see that we have some ornamental oregano. Here's um, this, I think it's called dragon's blood sedum, this red one. We have some lavender in here and you can see that I have a whole host of other plants that I have to plant up in this bed. But you know, this bed is quite large, but it was easier for me to start saying, okay, what can I start here around these rocks? So what's nice about uh, planting in between the stones is that it gives you, it, give, it might give a nice microclimate. So maybe, you know, the plant wants to be shaded a little bit more, protected from the elements. You can see I have this, uh, this grass right here, which is um, uh, Panicum Shenandoah red grass and I have it right next to this, I think it used to be called Sedum Seboldii. And I have the option now of like planting up some of these plants and I have to make some decisions here about, you know, I don't want the plants to be too big because then if they get too big, you're not going to see the beautiful stones. And one of the elements of designing with stones in a rock garden or a stone garden or stones just in a garden is that it invites you to come up a little bit more closely to look at the plantings. So um, I kind of have to work around seeing beautiful plants and maybe the bigger plants will be in the distance and we'll have smaller, more creeping plants, you know, in the foreground so it doesn't uh, block the stones. And then I thought, you know, what would be really nice, create this into like a little bird oasis and I found this online. It's an actual stone that's naturally, um, they use high pressure water to turn it into like a little bird bath. And I just, you know, took a couple, two, two more stones that I found in the area. 
just placed it right there. And so again, it looks like there's a there's movement with this. Yeah, so I'm gonna just take a few more of these and see if I could figure out where to place them. And these again, are I think they're beautiful. I mean, there's some stone that we found that didn't quite make the cut, if you will. And again, I like, I like this movement. I even have some just kind of tapering off here. The first stone that I brought in was this guy. That's the first one that I had carried over. And I really like the shape of that. And then I had already planted this juniper, blue star juniper, but I put stones around it. And I think that looks like, I think that looks nice. And then up here again, I have this persicaria and I might actually just uh, continue to lay stones down. The color red also matches. Yeah, that's really nice. I like that. that it's like this iron and this ferrous looking in, in them. I almost like don't want to lose this one. I want to keep that one inside because it has such a beautiful fossils on. But it's kind of neat because if you come here and you see the stones, then it invites you in to take a closer look and you're like, oh my God, there's fossils on there. And I think that's how we feel when we're in our landscape and we're like walking in the woods and we find a fossil, it's so neat. So to be able to like display them in almost like a little mini landscape, you're actually creating like a little diorama within the landscape itself and telling a larger story. And we really wanna take our time with this bed because um, it, it's going to have a really special story that goes along with it and um, hopefully I'll get it like planted up within the week because we're already into the summer months and it gets a little harder and harder to plant when it when it gets hot. Now this one's a fat stone so what I'm going to do is bury it a little bit. You can see I have cardboard under here because we're trying to get rid of the grass and increase the size of the bed. And what I would probably do here is uh, like plant some sedums in between. So uh, on my other channel, Plant One On Me, I did uh, crevice gardening in a container. And that's really the same principle. We're just actually going to be crevice gardening in a larger planting bed. So I have a number of other sedums. These I salvaged from down in the meadow area, but I ended up um, getting some more sedum that will you know, kind of take and, and uh, weave throughout here and make it look uniform. And I really like the color of the sedum. It's a little bit more like a, this fur up here. So this fur is really blue. And some of the sedums have that kind of bluish glaucous hue. So that's the kind of look that we're gonna go in with this bed. The stones, the kind of glaucous blue color, and then also some of the, the deeper red tones as well. Even the penstemon, which we took from the meadow, has some of the, the red stems. I think this is probably a nursery escapee that was known as Husker Red. And so we took some and planted it in here. But you know, this, this tree doesn't have um, the, as much interesting bark. It kind of lost some of its uh, good look. So I probably will put some larger, taller plants here. But again, I, I like the color of the bark and I think the bark really translates well with the color of the stone, if you see that. So I don't wanna cover all of the bark, but I'm gonna cover some of it so it's not so bare down here. But I mean, look, look at this color. It looks exactly like that stone you're standing on. It's beautiful. So yeah, so that's just like the principle of stones. I think that, like I said, you're limited by what you can actually carry and you don't want to hurt yourself in the whole process. I was lucky to have Sonder and the UTV and some ingenuity, but you know, basically we'd try to lift up a stone, stick a, a, a two by four underneath it and, and try to leverage and like roll it over onto something and drag it. But you could get some professionals or some really, you know, beefy folks to come in and actually, you know, lift the stones for you. But don't go and get a hernia or anything along those lines. But I highly recommend it because I think that this garden wouldn't be as interesting if we didn't bring stones into it. 
We'll be planting and finishing up this garden bed throughout the summer, so stay tuned for a future video on how it all comes together. And if you're keen to learn more about growing plants indoors, feel free to check out our sister channel over at Plant One On Me here on YouTube.